My name's Adam Manaka and I'm the financial controller for High Tech Oils. With our national capacity, we can now service Australian companies nationwide. Of late, we have now expanded into the New Zealand market. Here at High Tech Oils, we receive premium base oils and premium additive packs. Together, with our highly trained staff, we manufacture over 500 premium quality products. High Tech Oils is Australian made and Australian owned. are on the track so it's over to Darren Smith and Tony Shebecki in the booth for race three, the final race of the weekend. These guys uh, had some fantastic racing yesterday and a bit of a, a to-do with Kevin Shields and Ryan Shule yesterday. Uh, they both went off at the bottom of one, a very high speed off, brought the safety car out and for those guys it was a, a, an opportunity for them to actually catch back up to the back of the field and Ryan Shule then making his way forward and finishing in the mid of the field. Now, we go back to grid positions from qualifying today. So Ryan Schull has P1. Uh, next to him will be Josh Denton in P2. That's how they're going to grid up on the front. Liam Lawson, who is our series leader at the moment, the young gun from New Zealand, uh, hasn't finished any worse than third so far for the F4 season. So he is having an amazing year. Cameron Shields in that McDonald's car will start from fourth. Simon Fallon will start from P6, Aaron Love from P7, Nick Rowe, P8, Sage Murdoch, Zach Best, Jordan Mazzaroli and Zane Morse bringing up our field. Great shots of the uh, the safety services available for here at the Shadows Nationals, the Race Solutions Medical Crew, Victorian Fire and Rescue there as well. So they all work in with each other and we are away and it was Josh Denton that jumped away very nicely there. Liam Lawson went with him as they charge down into the turn one. It is Josh Denton that will lead the number five of our pole sitter, Ryan Sewell. Cameron Shields gets straight across from the left-hand side to the right-hand side to cover that run up into turn two. But he is coming under fire now by the 30 of Liam Lawson. And these guys are going to battle for this all the way through. They've got 17, uh, sorry, 14 laps to do it in. And this is going to be a long old journey. Yesterday's race, late in the day, the whole field was condensed up after a brief safety car period, and they just went for it. Yeah. Josh Denton, unfortunately, taken off by Tyler Everingham in race one yesterday. Uh, that incurred a 30-second penalty for Tyler Everingham going into race number two. The race that he actually won, the 30-second penalty took him to 10th position because there was two DNFs from race one, and he worked his way from, race, uh, from P10 to P1 in yesterday's race. So a great effort by Tyler Everingham with that Zagami Motorsport Miguel Formula 4 car. But Josh Denton leads Ryan Sewell around now as they make their way uh, to Lukey oh, Heights. 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 It is the, too. the Rising Star competitors currently sitting P2 and P4 on the road. That is uh, Ryan Sewell and Cameron Shields. And they're uh, looking pretty strong with it there. Sage Murdoch, a big lock up towards the back of the field. There, saw a puff of smoke come out. It's uh, Josh Denton in front, final turn, final turn for their first lap of the race. 17 laps remaining in this one for the Cam's JP Australian Formula 4 Championship. And here comes Ryan Sewell now. He puts the pedal to the metal. That's a Garby Motorsport coming up against the Team BRM car. Gee, the juggernaut of Team BRM coming under threat with this Garby, aren't they? The many, many years of Formula 3 competition with Team BRM. Been around for a long time. Bonte and Michael Rundle, they run a very strong operation. Cameron Shields has been bumped out of P3. He's gone back to four now as Liam Lawson is on maximum attack on the back of Ryan. Uh, sorry, that's uh, now Josh Denton as Ryan Sewell goes through to the lead. And Zane Morse just down the, the back of the field. He's the third of the uh, rising star contenders. Gee, was, I thought Liam Lawson was going to get up the inside there as Josh Denton went wide on the hairpin. He does get up the inside now. Will it be enough to give him second position? It will. He works his way now to the front. Ryan Sewell in front of him. It is Liam Lawson second. Josh Denton relegated to third. Cameron Shields relegated to fourth. So a bit of a mix-up up the front of the grid. That yellow and white car, or what do we call that? A, a light green and white car? No, we go with yellow. Tennis ball yellow, <laughs> tennis ball <laughs> green, something like that. Like his helmet suits him, looks good. Zagami Motorsport uh, car of Ryan Schull in front as they make their way back down Lukey through MG. 
Liam Lawson now with a new target in front of him and an opportunity to try and get himself back into the lead of another Formula 4 race. Let's look back down through the field as they come around to complete two. It's Sewell to Lawson. They've changed around. Denton's changed around. And Shields is now back in four. It's Everingham to Nick Rowe. We'll keep an eye on the number 97. This guy is makes a habit of pushing through the field pretty hard. Simon Fallon last year's person rookie of the year in the number 27 to Aaron Love. Jordan Mazzaroli for junior race development. They know their way around the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. So we talk about highlights of Shannon's Nationals races, especially here at Phillip Island. I think it was Dean Randall many years ago. Probably not a highlight for Dean, but a massive roll. Big off there. That looked like Nick Rowe. He's gone to the dirt. He's bouncing yes. around. The SCT logistics car spins. Oh. He keeps control, grabs a cog, get it going, Nick. The number 97, there's not a gear to find, but he tries to get going again. Very, very lucky stuff. Yeah, it certainly was. It hasn't been the best weekend for Nick Rowe. Had a, uh, oh, a horrific qualifying, I think is the way to put it. Let's have a look at the replay of what happened to Nick Rowe. We can see him coming around with a couple of Team BRM cars. He's just getting a bit greedy there. I think Tony was trying to go yeah. as wide as he could, try and keep as much road speed under him as he possibly could. Nick Rowe is one of those lucky guys that has uh, been given the opportunity to drive these cars for a little bit longer than normal due to the fact that you're only allowed two full years driving a Formula 4 car. He had a couple of races towards the end of the first season, the first season yeah. and then he's had this is his second full year, so he'll effectively get two full years and a couple of races. Hey, he's done some other driving as well. He drove the Mark yeah. Cars outfit. Oh, we've got an off there as well. That's the number 78, oh. and he goes round. That's Love. Oh, goes over. I reckon that might have been Sage Murdoch. I'm not too sure. Not 100%. Couldn't see the helmet of the driver. Safety car. Safety car. So this Garmy McLaren will be uh, rocketing out of pit lane now. Yep. Sage Pretty Murdoch. sure it was Sage Murdoch and Aaron Love coming together there. Aaron Love having the off and then going straight into the side. Bang! Just got him. Sage Murdoch, right, wrong place, wrong time. That's all it was. Sage Murdoch even had his hand in the air then acknowledging the fact that he was off. Don't even know if you would have seen Aaron Love no. coming towards him. Bang! Watch this. He, he puts his hand up. Yeah, there he is. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. And, and Oh, I tripped yeah. over. And well, there's not gently over he went. Water coming up from behind. So this is going to be a weird old few laps for these boys as they try to na na navigate their way around this Phillip Island circuit on slicks in the west. Word from race control is yes, this is possibly going to be shortened. One lap after 12.18 by me, that's now. So this is probably going to be our last lap as they just scrabble for grip there. Ryan Sewell hanging on, just easing on there. Liam Lawson is getting away from them. Can you believe that? Nick Rowe is trying to push his way through. Whoa. And we've got a spinner, Zane Morse. Zane Morse, yeah, number 11 for Zane Morse. Look at Liam Lawson. He said, right, oh, I see the rain. Let's have a go. This is a challenge. I'm going to try and break away a lead. At the moment, we're being told there's eight laps on our timing screen remaining. But uh, as you said, time critical. Probably only one lap, maybe, if this is it, or maybe one lap after this, as we see Simon Fallon trying to get up the inside of Ryan Schull. Now the outside, back to the inside again. Gee, the fact that the hood's on on the uh, Porsche people now, it's definitely raining out there, so uh, that's a good indication. Umbrella's up. And uh, here we go. Ryan Sewell hanging on. In fact, all hanging on. It's Nick Rowe that's actually making positions with Cameron Shields. So the guys that have got the experience in open wheelers, Cameron Shields experiencing in very, very fast open wheelers here. He's him in the number 73, the McDonald's uh, livery. And he's just made up two positions in this one lap around and he's looking now onto the back of Ryan Sewell so Cameron Shields could uh, end up going from back of the field almost zero to hero in, this, uh, in these conditions. Very much looking forward to this Cameron Shields and, and possibility of maybe one, maybe two more laps for this race for him because he has made up uh, five or six spots. Look at Liam Lawson yeah, five he's seconds out, away, he? he's gone that's Josh Denton not wanting to lose any points to Cameron Shields gone through now so here we've got two rising star competitors currently sitting three and four on the road Simon Fallon into two by the way Tony he wasn't having the best of weekends no. until just now well, there you go Kevin Shields had an opportunity to look up the inside of Ryan Shaw maybe again final lap confirmed 
Okay, final lap it is confirmed. So it'll be Liam Lawson who's doing a nice. I won't say he's going to win 100% definitely because anything could happen in the last half a lap for him. He's on turn four around the hairpin. He navigates that ever so gently. Jim and Fallon. We've seen some impressive driving this week, and I think this uh, of Liam Lawson out in front now is some of the best. He's driving away from the field, and Cameron Shields, look at it, just wobbling all over the place. Memories of uh, Glenn Seaton in the DR31 skyline across the top of Bathurst all those years ago. Goes through. Cameron Shields in a position two. Three. Three, sorry. He's got to chase after Fallon now. That's not going to happen. He's too far up the road as he goes back one more spot. These guys have seen the conditions and said, right, let's have a battle. Right, We're all sure. racing in the rain. Right, Josh Denton Stand trying to up. get up the inside now of Cameron Shields. Shields again up the inside of Shul. Maybe. No. Shul holds onto it. He's still going wide there. Probably not the line you want. You want to give yourself plenty of room to slide. Like <laughs> we just saw him do. Thunder breaks now. Cameron Shields eyes through the corner. He's not worrying about what's right in front of him. He's looking through for the opportunity on the exit. There it is. Oh. Sewell slams the door. Cameron Shields, I wouldn't say got out of it, but he certainly had that door slammed in his face. Josh Jenton still looks like he might be able to get something there as uh, our winner, Liam Lawson, crosses the track. Here's the battle for third, fourth, and fifth. Sewell, Shields, Denton, Fallon also crosses the line in second place. And Sewell's going to get it, is he? Oh, that was a tough run. I reckon he did. By half a wheel from Cameron Shields, who had a big run down the straight at the finish. Josh Denton also there just behind them. We'll wait for the official placings. Darren, that rain played havoc with everyone's grip, but we're hearing now from race control that Liam Lawson has been given a 30-second penalty after he overtook during the safety car period. So despite finishing first on track, that penalty effectively moves him all the way down to seventh place, which means Simon Fallon is your race winner. So that battle between Fallon, Saul and Shields at the end, in actual fact, was for the race win. It's a massive result. Josh Tenton takes fourth over Tyler Everingham and Zach Best, while Nick Rowe, Aaron Love and Sage Murdoch all fail to make it home. Thank you very much, Tony Shebecki. Richard Krause jumped right alongside me here in the comm booth as we see the Porsche Carrera Cup for 2017. Field driving out. Really slippery conditions. I think everyone's seen the sun this morning and gone, we'll put some slick Pirelli tyres on as we get ready for race two. This is a very greasy racetrack, a lot of rain overnight. So these are going to be very, very difficult conditions for this race. Yesterday it was McBride and Thomas leading home Wall and Small and Dylan O'Keefe and Adam Gowans. Sam Chicken and Daniel Gaunt, Stephen Grove and Tim Slade. A um, couple of pros will start this race because they finished yesterday. One of them is Tim Slade in car number four. The other one will be Daniel Gaunt. Remember yesterday he stormed his way through the field in the HTFU Sam Shehin Buick Motorworks car um, to be P4. The grid fields up for one hour's worth of racing. There's a pit window that opens 25 minutes into the race for a driver change and a tyre change if you want. So Gaunt in pit lane in the Sam Shahin car, missing from the second row of the grid. Ready for Porsche Carrera Cup Australia. The Pro-Am, the annual classic two driver race. It's a big part of the championship. Dylan Thomas pops the clutch and stalls. He cops a nudge through. Hopefully everyone avoids him because they're all going really quickly. But the race one winner's stuck and going nowhere. And it's Shane Smollen, the Tag Heuer Carrera Challenge champion, who goes down. Tim Slade cops a hit from Adam Gowans, but hangs on to it at turn one. It's really busy. Nick Foster, he started this race 11th. He's running P4. Somehow, he's rocketed up the field. It was Cameron McConnell in this Garmy Motorsport car that just missed. Broken steering, broken steering on Adam Gowans. Broken right front corner in that car. He's going nowhere. That'll be his race. And down the inside now goes Tim Slade. So the supercars driver, he'll be good in these conditions. All that experience goes to the race lead. As I mentioned, Cam McConville just missed the standing still. Dylan Thomas off the front row there with McBride. And there's uh, smoke pouring out of the uh, side of that car now where the steering's broken up. Yeah, he's done. Adam Gowan, young Tasmanian, who did a really nice job yesterday. I feel for Dylan O'Keefe. And down the inside goes Nick Foster. So the pros in these conditions are going to the front very, very quickly. With Dean Fiore making moves in car nine. This is really busy. Aaron Island in car triple seven. He shares with Andre Heimgartner. This is 
seventh through about 14th place. They're all trying to negotiate their way through. And at the back of it was Daniel Gaunt in car 13, who started from pit lane. Tim Slade, strong, strong start there. Really getting away very, very nicely indeed. It's teaming down now as well. So anyone who's decided on the wet tire kicks a goal in this. And for the APB group car, for Adam Gowans, it doesn't matter. Down the inside goes Daniel Gaunt on car triple eight, Jeff Emery behind the wheel. Really difficult conditions. Let's see if anyone pits. I'm not sure who's on slicks or not. I got a feeling the whole field started on wet tires, but in these mixed conditions, you can take the gamble. At the moment, whatever you've got on you is not going to offer anything. The, the slick tire is not going to offer you anything. It's not wet enough to pump the road dry. I reckon it's good for. Uh, I reckon it's good for wets now, Darren. Absolutely teeming down at the moment and spray from these cars as well. So at the end of a pretty crazy opening lap, it's Tim Slade by Nick Foster. So Nick Foster started 11th. He was fourth by turn one and he's second now. Dean Fiore is third. Daniel Gaunt is fourth. Then it's Shane Smollen, Rob Woods, Jeff Emery, John Goodacre, Tim Miles, Cam McConville rounding out the top 10. So he's the next of the pro drivers. And into pit lane comes Dylan Thomas. And the car that won the race yesterday stalled off the start. He is now in the lane. And I wonder if they started, Darren, on slick tyres. Yeah, I'm not so sure. They uh, just didn't get off the line, did he? He was uh, in all sorts of stripe. The number 77 is uh, up in the air now, putting it on Go Jackson. Oh, it's definitely coming into the shed. It's going in the garage. So Shebex will be in the pit lane. We'll find out what's going on with that. That's a big blow for the race winner yesterday. Rod Woods and Javishan Padiachi in the 21 there, the Platinum Nightclub car. Doing well, already found their way up into uh, P4. Running strongly. Started this race 12th place. I wonder if it's Devarshan Padiachi who started that car. A guy with a lot of experience in that race car. Our timing showing Rob Woods, but he's only done a handful of Korea Cup races. If he's going this well in the rain, he's doing a very, very nice job. Big slide. Big tank slapper. Dean Fiore lost it. He's gone. And he's still spinning. He's still spinning all the way into the fence in the outside of turn 12. I wonder if uh, the broken double seven car might have been when it copped a clip when it stalled at the line from car 88. So double seven and double eight. I think that's just uh, communal damage there. So Fiori's kept this car out of the fence. It's very confusing. There's cars diving into pit lane. Jeff Emery's in there. John Goodacre's in there. You cannot complete your compulsory pit stop. And yet they're putting wets on. Diving for Michelin wow. wets down there, these guys. So I, I uh, can't believe they started on slicks, to be honest. Strong contenders too. Emery, Goodacre, Gilbertson, all into the pits. What it's going to do, those that started on wets, or if you can preserve somehow on slicks, if this rain shower passes, they, they get a free pit stop when they get to the pit stop window because they're making an additional stop now under green conditions and outside the window. So it doesn't count as your compulsory pit stop. Ben Fiore's back on after that big spin at the top of the straight there. A little bit of a different barge here. The McConville number five and uh, the number three there. It's been, it's been lasting for about four hours, isn't it? Car 13 shown in front because a bunch of cars have peeled off into pit lane. So the HTFU Porsche has dived off. Uh, Woods shown as second. So car 13 in front, car 21. It's Tim Slade shown as third. So Slade was leading the race. He must have had an off somewhere. There's timing showing him in third place. Slade in the lane now. He's got a 23 second margin. Daniel Gaunt. It's definitely Gaunt behind the wheel because he finished the race yesterday. So the drivers that finished yesterday, just to reiterate, have to start this race. It's in the rules. So the driver that started yesterday, by virtue of that, will end up uh, finishing today's race. Now, Tim Slade is in the lane, so that's why he's dropped a few spots. Daniel Gaunt driving very well indeed here. He's uh, hooked up on rails. That's a very high load corner coming around Hayshed and then into Lukey Heights, having absolutely no difficulty at all in the number 13. So I, I think it's reasonably safe to assume, Darren, that they've rolled the dice and went for the wet weather mission with tyre option and I think that's worked and car four sitting in pit lane now. Not a lot of activity going on. There goes the Slade Dog with new wets. You can see the sticker on the left rear corner of that car. So a sticker set of brand new Michelin wet with the tyres. Check this out. So this is car nine. Dean Fiore shown behind the wheel of this. Big slide, big slide. Catch. Goes the other way. 
Still spinning, still spinning. Now he goes the other way, so he's gone through 360 degrees at one point or another in this accident. And it's still spinning at this point. He gathers it up and drives it off. So it's a fairly loose little moment there for experienced West Australian. It was, the, it was an understeer, oversteer, then loop the loop around there. All kinds of steer. Absolute passenger of that one. The, uh, the skies are, are bright at one end of the track. We're seeing that with the sunshine there, but out over Bass Strait, it is grey and dark. And that's where the weather's coming from today. This is going to be a really, really difficult race to read just with the way this is all played out. So the car we're watching is 33. It's 13th place. John Goodacre, the vastly experienced South Australian GB3 Cup Challenge runner behind the wheel. So it's car 13, Sam Sheehan and Daniel Gaunt leading. Rob Woods and Devash and Patiachi in second place. Dan Grant and Lee Holdsworth shown in third. Then Nick Foster and Graham Williams shown in fourth place with Tim Miles in P5 alongside Jackson Evans who will finish this race. So Miles is doing a really good job. Which Sonic car is this? Missing at least one, if not two, of the sevens on its windscreen. I've got a feeling it's Aaron Island. It is. He was running seventh, but he's pitting. And they've decided it's just too wet. Getting closer and have a look at those tyres. Daz, because we've had all these green flag pit stops, at the moment there's only four cars in the lead lap. Which is Shaheen Woods, Grant and Foster, 13, 21, 8 and 131. So they've all barreled into pit lane. They've all done a tyre change to get wet weather tyres. And it's left four people out in front on their merry own. So this could be absolutely a, uh, a four horse race the way this plays out. But then if you're a lap in front, you roll the dice and roll You take it. a leisurely you stop, don't absolutely. you? Absolutely. Nick, Nick Foster's the one that's uh, the, the leading the ones on the fifth lap, if you like, in this race. Well, no, I think Nick's about a minute and 30 seconds behind the 13 car that leads the race. So this... Still on the lead lap. Yeah, it, this is McConville v Smollen. The Repair Management Australia car goes to the outside of the Wilson Security Wall Racing Porsche. So David Wall is a point off the lead in the championship. They finish the way they are with car 77 in pit lane and triple seven behind him take the lead in the championship. Not by much, but just a little bit for David Wall, who, believe it or not, is yet to win a Porsche Carrera Cup Australia round. He's been second five times the round podium and yet to win a round, David Wall. Car in the wall, two cars damaged, but one car heavily in the fence on driver's left coming out of turn 12. Don't worry about Jackson Evans' car. There's a car parked down there. I wonder if it's the Horsley Park gun shop car of uh, Anthony Gilbertson. Yep, it sure is. He has had a horrific day, Anthony Gilbertson, in James Abella's Porsche. He had a couple of dramas in the GT3 Cup races early on. We go safety car. So it's really shallow. So it actually wasn't an enormous hit, but it was Tim Miles who had the slide. And Miles, he's whacked Gilbertson and driven him into the wall. So they weren't going that quickly. That could have been a much, much bigger crash. In pit lane is Andrew Rolls and he's found Nick McBride. Nick McBride, uh, all sorts of problems with the 77 car. What happened from the start? Uh, unfortunately, it just looks like Dylan stalled it off the line there um, and he's being collected by the O'Keefe Gowans car. So it looks just one of those things. It was quite wet. Um, he was on slick, so I'm sure he's just tried to take it off like a bit of a road car and um, unfortunately stalled it, but you know, that's, that's the way motor sport goes. The car spent a lot of time in the garage here. Uh, what was the problem and what needed to be fixed? Uh, it pretty much spent the whole uh, rear left corner when the Gowans car hit. So, um, you know, from shock to most of the arms, um, the boys have done a great job just to get it back out there, to be honest, um, within 20 minutes. So, um, that's up to It's going to be a very, very dicey lap. In wet conditions, they're all diving across to the outside to get water onto these tyres, bit of a dry line developing. I think it's a legitimate question. Do you roll the dice and put slick tyres on at the stop? So I think you're right. You go as long as you can and just see what the track's going to do and what the weather's going to do because it might be a case of putting slicks on. It's going to be a big, big gamble because at the moment, well, especially around the hay shed, it's going to be a big gamble because if you, if you put one wheel off the dry line around the hay shed at the moment, you're going to end up in the fence. Everyone has to have a gamble to try and get the number 13 back. Yeah, well, good luck catching them because yeah. they're a lap ahead of the field. That's so, what I mean. You're going to go here at a zero or vice versa, whatever yeah. way. You, you've got to throw, you've got to throw everything at it. Put, take sensible decisions out of the bag and have radical decisions. Brilliant, like my Daniel Gorn. Hasn't he enhanced his credentials? I spoke to Sam Shin about him last night. 
it was a last minute deal to, to get Dan in that car and they hadn't had much to do with each other, done a little bit of driver training but aside from that didn't really have a, a long standing co-driving relationship like some of these pros and ams did and he said mate what a drive, Dan Gaunt was superb, gave him the car in 13th place and he stormed his way up the order to P4, just missed out on the podium. Just another one of these super talented journeyman type races that get chucked the keys from time to time to, to go for a burn and acquit themselves every single time with the hands and feet so very well so who peels off does anyone stop yet none of these cars it's jeff emery in car number triple eight no it's not associated with roland dane supercar team but it's a, a good racing number and they had a horrific day yesterday i think the lane penalty. Got the lane. it was a pit lane penalty for car triple eight for having crew members over the line the working line as emery goes down the inside and gets a pass done uh, working members over the line, and it was a three-minute penalty. Greg Murphy-esque. Couldn't find any porta potties for them to go and run into. But uh, it was pretty controversial stuff, but the rule was there. Pretty forthright rule. So Dean Grant first of the leaders to pit in car rate, and first of the cars on the lead lap to pit as well. Dean Fiore is now pushing very, very hard after he's uh, pretty scary off up at turn 12. Round through four that time, pushing hard and uh, continues to do so in the Marcini Hallmark entry. That's the number four, Tim Slade at the wheel. So it's a couple of guys that have been wheel to wheel with each other before, back in the supercars when they were both in it together. The early days for Tim Slade in his supercar career. This is going to be very, very interesting now because Lee Holdsworth will jump behind the wheel of car number eight. So they're putting their pro in as early as they can. So Lee Holdsworth now down the lane, jumps in. So the three cars on the lead lap, He's going to be the pro driver. Well, Devarsha Padiach is a pro, so he'll jump in that car behind Rob Woods. But I wonder if now he'll actually get some F1-style undercut here with Lee Holdsworth out earlier. He'll get some pace and uh, blaze around. So third at the moment, but he was only seven seconds behind the leader when he stopped. Leader in the lane, Daniel Gorn peels car 13 off to take their stop, and he'll hand over to Sam Shikin, and Rob Woods does the same. So the race is in the balance now. Positional change a little bit further back. It'll be still only 15 laps completed. It's been a very, very eventful 15 lap. I'm going to throw the uh, phrase time set down in this one. Yeah, yeah. So there's the driver change for the race leaders in the lane. Yeah. Lee Holdsworth has assumed the lead through that. So stopping early has worked for them. They've got the track position, so it really was an undercut. Tim Slade just stepped out of the Grove car. Tim, a lovely stint for you. Yeah, it was uh, tricky at the start there. Um, you know, out on a wet track was slick, so um, yeah, it was uh, was really hard work. It was it was zero grip, so I was uh, I was fairly pleased when we come in and put the wets on. But then um, yeah, I didn't really I had no pace in the wet. Really, I think we um, had way too much pressure in them because they went off super quick. And um, yeah, just handed over to Steve. And uh, I'm I'm not sure how the safety car panned out for us. Um, I think if you you know you start with the with the pro in the car, if you get a safety car, um, you know, normally it doesn't work in your favour. But I'm not sure where we were at after the pit stops and whatever else. So um, yeah, we'll see um, how Steve ends up for the rest of the race. Heimgartner forces his way through his teammate. So Andre's the fastest guy on the racetrack. He's now fifth. Holdsworth in front by 25 seconds. He's doing all he can. There's 11 laps to go. But Paddy is going to get mowed down by these guys, and it's going to happen very, very soon. Simon Ellingham clearly on wets as well. They're looking for as much uh, standing water as they possibly can. The oldest trick in the book. The biggest giveaway that you are on wets when it's a drying track. Oh, wall. Yeah, wide at turn two. This is that. Heimgartner making his way through. So that's another, it's a free kick there for Andre. He's up to fourth place. Aaron Island, his teammate, his first ever Carrera Cup Australia round this weekend. Race GT3 Cup at Sandown to get some miles. Tested here now, Heimgartner's wide. And Wall retakes the position. They're just extending the levels of grip a little bit here. And these two, and the more they do this, they're going to cost themselves plenty of time as they try and catch the three cars in front. Davison holding down P2 in the uh, 888 car now. Lee Holdsworth driving brilliantly out in front. He's super, super consistent on wet tyres that must be absolutely <laughs> stuffed right now. 
Well, we've seen Sanford Hinn fall off the uh, the edge with the performance of the wet tyre in these dry conditions. It's bound to happen to Lee Holdsworth. It's just a, it's like a ticking time bomb as to when that happens. This guy's still battling, and they're still dragging Jackson Evans in onto the back of them as well. So this will be a three-way battle, and it'll be a three-way for the pros. And Alex Davison now very, very strong at this point in the race. And that gap was out over to 26 seconds between Lee Holdsworth and Alex Davison. Now 20 seconds. Laps remaining saying nine. The lapse time in the 60-minute race is 53 minutes and 40 seconds. I got him down the inside at turn one. Heimgartner slices through. And that should be all she wrote with the pace that this guy's got. Should be. Their pace last time was better. They were still miles quicker than the leaders. They're only 45 seconds from the lead. He'll put his head down and drive forward now. Just thinking big picture for a little moment. At the moment, David Wall and Shane Smollin will get the most points for the weekend. One lap after 13.29, time certain race finish. What's the time now? 13.28, so they're going to run out of lap time. Holtworth's going to win this with Dean Grant. Certainly fallen their way, hasn't it? We're about one minute from getting the last lap board. Oh, it's a shame because these two were going to fly up behind the leaders. But what a performance. Uh, while all this has been going on, by the way, Alex Davison has uh, got to second place. So he's got in front of Devash and Padiachi, which is a really good performance. So Dean Grant, 37 Porsche Career Cup Australia rounds to his credit. Best overall of six. His best race finish is fifth. So this is going to be his first victory, and of course, Holtworth as well. It's only 13 seconds. Davison is absolutely flying up behind them, but it is now. Holtworth is on his final lap. The impressive run, Jeff Emery and Davison coming out of the uh, last row of the grid. Jeff Emery pushed hard in that early stanza of the race, which was largely all dry running. Tony? Dean, this is an exciting last half a lap. Do you think he can hold on? Look, I'm so nervous. We're, we're still on wets and we're losing 10 seconds. Alex is gaining 10 seconds a lap, but it's um, my heart rate's about 120, I think. So I think we can. I think I think we'll make it. You've got a good bloke in the car, though. Uh, he's, he's a fantastic guy, and uh, he's teaching me heaps, too. It's really good. All right, mate. We'll stick with you. We'll get you after the race. We'll let you watch it. What a performance. Dean Grant and Lee Holdsworth will win for the first time together and for the first time in Porsche Carrera Cup Australia. An unbelievable Porsche Pro-Am. He is a happy boy. It's his first win in the championship. Shebex. Dean, fantastic stuff. He held on your first Carrera Cup win, mate. How good's that? I've been doing this for, since 2002, 2003, first year. But um, wow, that was amazing. We had it down to the wire, one lap to go, I think. Uh, stayed out on wets. Um, started, started, started in pit lane last on wets but it was a, the right call and the car was just just mega the guys did a great job Porsche and Melbourne uh, just just wrapped so and Lee I uh, just want to thank everyone that everyone did it just yeah I can't I'm sort of speechless great result two-time champion of the Tag Heuer Carrera Challenge he won it in 2004 and 2005 there's the final results so Andre Heimgarten got to third just on the final lap of the race and uh, third, fourth, fifth and sixth place were covered by two seconds as they crossed the line. We had a fantastic race, you know, I think um, Dino's call to go to wets early on in the race was uh, the right call for sure and um, he started carving them up and carving through the field and then um, got us up into third for the stop. Uh, we had a beautiful stop after yesterday's terrible stop. Um, so yeah, and then um, I, I got a bit nervous out there because I could see it was like a it was definitely a, a, a track for slicks, and um, I knew you know the gap behind was uh, was closing in. But I started trying to work out how many seconds do I, what, what what lap time do I need to do to get to the end in front. I knew it was going to be very close at the end, but we got there, and um, that's fantastic. Dean Dean did a great job, and I thank um, him and the team for having me for the weekend. I had a lot of fun. <laughs>